Welcome back. Thanks for watching Holy Land Uncovered. Earlier in the show, uh, we mentioned the International Holocaust Day and the attempt to preserve the memory of this significant event in history. Our reporter Shelby Weiner brings us today a different angle, which was barely known to the public. Here's more. The Holocaust is widely considered the darkest time for humanity, but the atrocities most often remembered are those against the Jews. But the Nazis persecuted many religions and ethnicities. Most people, especially here in Israel, for instance, they know the story about the Jewish Holocaust, which was a horrific chapter in history. But most don't even know about Jehovah's Witnesses and what they went through and during that regime. And we just felt that the time was ripe to show that to the public. The Jehovah's Witnesses in Israel are hosting an exhibit the forgotten victims of the Nazi regime in central Tel Aviv in hope of teaching the public about their faith's plight in the Holocaust. Despite having heavy Holocaust education, most people in the Jewish state are not aware how far the Holocaust reached. I didn't know this group, I didn't know it before, and 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 I didn't know it before. And historians say this is an important step for Holocaust research and that it opens new doors of understanding to Hitler and his regime. In the recent years, we are more and more aware of the fact that there were other groups of people who were tortured, imprisoned, dehumanized. And in order to see the whole picture of the cruelty of this regime, of this German National Socialist regime, we have to learn about all groups. The Jehovah's Witnesses were one of many to be victimized during the Holocaust. Exhibits like this one in Tel Aviv show survivors' stories and hold their trials up for the world to see and to remember. All right, joining us uh, now is uh, Robert from Jehovah's Witnesses Israel. Hello and welcome to the show. Hello, good evening. I find it so shocking that, that we really don't know much about the plight of the Jehovah's Witnesses during the Holocaust. I mean, it was... It was quite prevalent. There were what was how how involved were the Jehovah's Witness population in Europe at the time of you know the Holocaust and World War II? Yes, well, uh, some sources say that Jehovah's Witnesses were the first hit by the Nazis and they were hit the hardest. Uh, for example, Jehovah's Witnesses were banned in the Nazi Germany in 1933, and after that, immediately their property was confiscated. They were experiencing beatings. Their children were taken from their families. Then they were sent to prisons and concentration camps. Many of them were even executed. Wow. What was the reason that they were, that they were targeted by well, the Nazis? This is a very good question because the reason wasn't their race or their nationality. It was actually the refusal to support the Nazi regime. They were actually boldly exposing the evils of the Nazi regime and they didn't want to go to the military. So that was the main reason. Wow, so they were very brave. And very brave and they even very often were given a document in which they could uh, renounce their faith, say, okay, I'm going to support you, I'm going to support the state and I'm not going to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. But they didn't do that, they continue uh, to serve their God and they continue which, even helping others. Which sounds, you know, uh, you know, so interesting as far as, you know, the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses explain because this is a very, you know, important difference within, you know, different forms of, of religion. So the Jehovah's Witnesses really believe simply in the teachings of Jesus staying true to what his original teachings were in the early days of early Christianity? Well, Jehovah's Witnesses base their beliefs on the whole Bible, which is the Hebrew Scriptures and the Greek Scriptures. This is the whole Bible, 66 books. And uh, uh, when, when it comes to their neutrality, this is what the Nazis noticed. They didn't want to support the Nazi regime. That's why they put them under pressure. Right. Explain also just Jehovah's Witnesses and their beliefs. So they believe in God or they only believe in, in Jehovah? Well, Jehovah is God. Mm -hmm. uh, his uh, son is Jesus Christ. That's according to the Bible. So that, that's the, one of the basic teachings. And uh, also Jesus Christ is considered to be the savior of mankind. He was sent by Jehovah God to the, to the earth to provide the, the sacrifice that was uh, needed and also he's the Messiah. Okay, and also what, how could you explain also why it hasn't been talked about? that, you know, how many Jehovah's Witnesses were affected by the Holocaust? Well, you are right, uh, not many people spoke about it, but the good news is actually that today uh, people speak about it more and more, and even though maybe in the past, maybe a couple of decades ago, Jehovah's Witnesses were called as the forgotten victims of the Nazi regime, today there are museums, 
that uh, feature Jehovah's Witnesses as the victims. There are very good web, uh, web websites in which you can go and uh, check about what really happened to Jehovah's Witnesses and why they were able to withstand the pressure from the Nazi regime. Mm. The How? exhibitions that mm -hmm. we had in Tel Aviv or in other places we have them in Europe like in uh, France, Germany, uh, Sweden and uh, Denmark where Jehovah's Witnesses and other people, other public can learn about what really happened and why it happened. What is the, uh, you know, the, the population, the influence of the Jehovah's Witness uh, population within Israel? Well, are there a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses here? There are about 1,700 uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. There are other supporters of uh, this group. And uh, as I said, our main activity is focused on helping people to learn about, about the Bible. As far as, you know, the, some of the holy spots, do the Jehovah's Witness community go and visit some of these, uh, some of these spots? We don't have any special places that we would visit to worship God. God is, uh, God is, uh, He can see us everywhere, so we can worship Him wherever we are. And actually, if we go back to the subject of Nazi era, this is what Jehovah's Witnesses always remembered. No matter where they found themselves, in prison, in concentration camp, or somewhere else, they knew their God hears them, that He would be able to support them and give them the needed And what do you have to, to say about, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, criticism, there's controversy in general, and, you know, Russia's banning Jehovah's Witnesses. What's your, your response to some of these decisions? Well, uh, it is sad that some decisions of that nature uh, are uh, made, but you know, uh, there is a very n nice Latin proverb which says, Historia magistra vita. We can learn a lot from the history. Uh, if you look at the history, you will see that totalitarian governments always suppress minority groups, and this is what Jehovah's Witnesses are. But if you look at democratic countries, you will notice that uh, uh, the governments in democratic uh, nations not only respect the right of Jehovah's Witnesses to worship, but also they would uh, give them some praise for good conduct and nice contribution to the society. And as far as the situation in Russia, I mean, are, have they, have the Jehovah's Witnesses have to go kind of underground or do many of them have to, you know, are they fleeing? Well, perhaps some of them were leaving the country. I don't have all the facts because this is a completely different topic. Yeah. But still, uh, I know that uh, most or the vast majority of Jehovah's Witnesses continue to serve Jehovah God as they can. Okay, well, thank you very, very much for coming in and explaining a very, a very interesting story and piece of history. Thank you very much. And uh, we will much. be right back after the break. Stay tuned.